five-time WCW champion. You're listening to WNS Podcast. Now, can you dig that, sucker? You're listening to the official Wrestling News Horse Podcast. For all of your information, go to WrestlingNewsHorse.com or check us out on Facebook by searching WrestlingNewsHorse.com or WNS Podcast. You can also find us on YouTube, Twitter, Stitcher, and iTunes by searching Wrestling News Horse Podcast or WNS Podcast. Now being broadcast in over 45 different countries, here are your hosts, Daniel Heron, Tyler A. Bear, and Doug. That's right. What's up, everyone? I am Daniel Heron. I'm Tyler. <laughs> Doug. And welcome to episode 185 of the official podcast for WrestlingNewsSource.com. For all of your information, go to WrestlingNewsSource.com. Check us out on Facebook, WrestlingNewsSource.com. You can find us on Facebook, WNS Podcast, on YouTube, WNS Video, and on iTunes, Wrestling News Source Podcast. Wait, no. Okay. We're on Stitcher, John Pod, and Play.fm. Just search Wrestling News Source Podcast to find us. Uh, tweet at us at WNS Podcast. You can tweet at Daniel at WNS underscore Daniel. You can, uh, are we fucking up the, huh? No. Uh, you can tweet at Tyler at Tyler underscore Aber. He just never talks in, you gotta project into the microphone without yelling. Uh, yeah, I am yeah. projecting. Yeah? Okay. So welcome to the show. We've got a lot to talk about. We're gonna have, that's projectile. Have some feedback. Yeah, that's project. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna have some feedback. We're gonna talk about Battleground, give you a, Thoughts on Raw, some Q&A, hot topics, all that and more. But first, how are you guys doing? I'm sleepy. Sleepy? Well, wake your ass up. We got a show to do. Give me some candy. Go get some candy. Why don't you go get some candy? I don't know. Well, go to the vending machine go get some candy. <laughs> so, uh, so, Doug, how you doing? I'm good. I'm yeah? fine, I guess. Don't need any candy? No, Tyler, I, I think I have a dollar if you want it. No, that's fine. Well, if you dance for us, I mean, you know, I gotta, I'm gonna have a dollar. <laughs> okay? kid. I want to make you that's yeah, dance, dance like that kid in that video for the for the two dollars. No, come on, no, yeah, I'll we pass. can go get some candy. I'll pass. Go get some candy. I'll have to get candy. Well, here, here's two dollars. Go get some candy. I'm okay, not dance, dance for us, no, and then get the candy, or go get the candy, then dance for us. Uh, <laughs> All right. I'm not going to lift my shirt up. Okay. Yeah, I'll let you have it. Go go for it. Go get some candy. So welcome to the show. Hey, give me like a... For some reason, I want Butterfinger. I haven't had a Butterfinger in like 10 years. <laughs> so yeah. So we got a lot to talk about. Uh, first thing we have is a uh, is an iTunes review that we didn't get to last week for some reason. I guess I forgot to write it down. So that's my bad. But uh, it's coming to us from Breaking Dad. Good name. Good name. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, giving us five stars saying, love the podcast. Doug what thinks a it's fine. Good name and a sweetheart. Yeah. Five stars. Uh, the topic is, love the podcast. Doug thinks it's fine. Or it's just fine, I should say. Um Saying, hey guys, I love your show. It's been my required weekly listening since earlier this year. I don't have any wrestling fan. Fr- uh, I don't have any wrestling fan friends, so it's like getting to chat with the guys after Raw and pay per views. Keep up the good work. Great mix of humor and recap. Always enjoy the prediction shows too. So thank you very much. Yeah, sweet. That was really nice of you. And uh, and for anyone who's listening to us on iTunes, feel free to give us a review and let us know what you think of the show as well. We certainly do appreciate it. Um, yeah, thanks for breaking, Dad. Yeah, and uh, thanks to everyone who's listening to us on the Stitcher app. We recently surpassed 150 subscribers on there, so really cool stuff. If you're one of the 150 and you have yet to uh, give us a review, please take some time to to do that. We would certainly appreciate it. Uh, and for those who are on uh, YouTube, thanks for all the comments. Uh, we get lots of comments on there, so it's uh it's nice to hear back from uh, some of our listeners. Um, and speaking of feedback, we do have feedback. The first one's coming to us from Thomas. Drop it low, son. Drop it low, son. Drop it, drop it low, son. Saying I'll do it twice for because dollars not here. Okay. Drop it low, son. Drop it, drop it low, son. Just because he's not in here right now? Oh, never mind. Like, if you play uh, that back, <laughs> give us a drop it low, son, real quick. Yeah. It's for, it's for Mr. Drop it low, son. Drop it low, son. Drop it, drop it low, son. He does it different than I do. He does. And he like grabs the mic. He's like all up in it. No, I mean it. his like yeah, uh, his rhythm is different than mine. His is it a little faster. His yeah, faster his pace. Fast. And that's all right. Drop it low, son. Drop it, drop it low, son. Uh, uh, okay. R.I.P. DJ Screw. <laughs> so Thomas says, uh, "Doug, you were right once again. 
If uh, if you class Punk, Brian Rollins, and Cesaro as successes and Sin Cara as a failed project, then their success percentage is 80%. Your math skills reign supreme again. You're now 2-0, and a 100% success record. All right. Wow. So, Doug slash math expert. First of all, <laughs> that's pretty awesome. <laughs> to just get all those right off the dome, right? Yeah. It's like Goodwill Hunting or some shit, huh? <laughs> How do you like them apples? How do you like them apples? <laughs> Applesauce, bitch. So, <laughs> but uh, so I'm 100. I'm two and 100 percent, right? I think it's. I think it'd be good to retire. As I'm gonna step out, Michael Cole yeah. style. Yeah. Uh, retire undefeated. There you go. Good call. <laughs> no more guessing percentages off the dome. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> although Michael Cole was brought into another match where he had where he then lost and uh, he had to kiss Jerry Lawler's feet. That's true. Yeah. So uh, so don't get goaded into a match where you have to kiss someone's feet or, don't talk math, me out. or math equations. Right. Don't so talk me out of retirement. If, if we start saying, oh, I think it was like 16 out of the last 43 people, and don't don't start spewing out you know percentages nope. or anything nope. like that. Just sit there idly and quiet and, you know. Don't tease me with any algebraic equations. <laughs> <laughs> Pythagorean theorems or anything like that. <laughs> So, uh, so, yeah, but thanks for the feedback there, Thomas. Uh, the next bit of feedback we have is from Parker saying, Kali is love, Kali is life, go Kali! Four exclamation points. So, uh, I can tell That's by... Huh? That's a lot. That is a lot. I can tell by y'all's reaction that y'all just don't care about Kali. So, moving on. Uh, next one's coming to Try us... Trying just candy, son. Yeah. So, uh, next one's coming to us from Steven saying, Kali let Bo beat him last week. Uh, he didn't want to bury Bo too quickly. So, all right. Uh, moving on from there. Uh, <laughs> Tyler, what are you doing? Sweeping the chocolate up. Sweeping the chocolate. So, uh, next bit of feedback we have is from Jeremy saying, another awesome podcast, guys. Hey, thanks for listening. We certainly appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you. Last bit of feedback we have is from uh, Viperous Planet saying, thanks to Daniel, I am now a believer. To Seth Rickson, Kali still sucks. So, there you go. <laughs> That's all you have to do is believe. I don't think Seth uh, Rickson is too concerned with anyone's, um, like, opinion. yeah, opinion. So, no. All right. Well, there you go. But thanks for the feedback. We certainly do appreciate it. It's time to go into our uh, battleground results that happened this last Sunday. We had the uh, the kickoff show or pre-show, whatever you want to call it. They had um, a match added to it. They had Adam Rose versus Fandango. I didn't really like the fact that they added a match to the pre-show. <laughs> We're trying to record this podcast while we're all eating candy. Yeah, second. mine's mine's gonna take a while because I do a lot it of talking. So, um, but yeah, um, I don't know. But the uh, the first match was Adam Rose versus Fandango. Really short match. Nothing really accomplished. You said Layla and uh, Summer Rae were part of the. Uh, yeah, they were part of the group and. Buds. Yeah, they were, and you know, they're basically just there to distract uh, Fandango, and um, it seems like lately all they do is just attach themselves as whoever is facing Fandango to cause a distraction, which is weird, but... What are you trying to say? Hmm? What are you trying to say exactly? That they're floaters? Like dirt, do you mean? What? <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not calling them turds. Get those turds away. What I'm saying man. is they go from person to person, you know, in order to distract turds Fandango. Turds person to person if you're right. them. Or... Well, yeah, I mean, if you want to be unhygienic. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so they cause the distraction. Adam Rose picks up the win, and they party. And then we have the next matchup, the scheduled matchup for the pre-show, Cameron versus Naomi. Another short matchup. This is going to take forever for me to eat. Um, Cameron versus Naomi. Uh, another short matchup, but Cameron ends up getting the victory. So what you, would you get? Well, Doug, what do you think about match. the matchup? Go tell her first watch you. He didn't watch it. Oh, it was pretty bad. Yeah, you know, remember uh, he was like an hour late. Right, forgot. Um, <laughs> it's pretty bad. They're calling spots pretty loudly. <laughs> they were like, um, it was just bad, guys. <laughs> Let me chew this fucking candy. <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> well, now I'm eating the candy. Okay, so Cameron. So this match, which I didn't see. Tyler, Tyler, can you like freestyle for long enough for us to like eat this candy bar real mm -hmm. quick? Chew up some airtime. Chew yeah. up some airtime. Okay. Well, we chew. chew. Tell a fucking story. Ad lib or fucking. <laughs> Ad lib. 
Uh, Put me on the spot. I don't have a fucking story. Give us a berry tale. A berry. Improv. Improv something. <laughs> oh, God damn it. Tell us uh, a joke. So I'm playing uh, <laughs> Wind Waker, right? Mm-hmm. Wind Waker. Right, right. And because uh, I got the, well, I got Wii U. Doug sold me the Wii U for $100, and I'm playing Wind Waker HD. And you can, uh, I haven't played the first one, so I'm learning. Oh, not the first one. This is the remastered. But uh, you can throw bottles and stuff into the ocean if you're connected to the internet and the me universe and all that stuff. So you can send a message out to someone else or whatever. I uh, sent out a paragraph. <laughs> just like random stuff. I got like, I found, uh, I just sent out like a paragraph in a book. And uh, I guess if someone wants to contact you, you can through the me universe. But then I'm just like giving out random information. You're sending out like scriptures? Uh, this is just out of a magazine. But then, like, I also, like, told them random information. Like, hey, the show's going to return on whatever. Or you could get a good deal <laughs> on uh, this if you go to the store. Or, hey, um, happy hours from here to here. Uh, just, like, stupid ass shit. Cause What's the worst it. thing you heard you read out of a bottle? Um, and I'm not, I'm not trying to be racist. I'm just reading this from a uh, bottle. I, uh, there's a picture of Link. <laughs> Daniel started to look to me like oh, with wide eyes. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm, I'm with. Okay. This picture of Link with his eyes big, and there's like this guy in the back, and this guy says, I'm with my. Oh, God. I can't say it. I don't want to. Then just say. It. What is it? N word? Yeah, N word. Then just say N word. It's like, I'm with my N word. And what is the picture of? Link, like, his eyes are like big, but in the background, there's like a black guy. Yeah, it's racist. I'm not going to. That's that's the worst. But if if you uh, do that stuff, you have to like agree to not like curse and stuff because they can cut off like your <laughs> dick. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, it will cut off your dick. <laughs> no, they'll find you. Uh, if you're in the me universe, they can like. Uh, How'd they get the n word by then? Huh? How'd they get the n word by then? I don't know. I got the bottle, so I don't know if they like it got. Reported or something? I don't know. Did you report it? Nope. No. Because if it was my choice, I would like say tons of curse words and send it to someone, but I can't do that. I get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Have to go stand in a corner. Yeah. Oh. I'll cut my dick off. I'm gonna cut your dick off. Okay. Well. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> Man, this shit's stuck in my teeth. Go ahead. Oh. All right. Well, time to dive on into battleground. Um, actually, all of the uh, all of the matches this week were. Scheduled matches, which is really nice. We didn't have any impromptu, uh, impromptu matches, so it's always nice to have that. So we kick things off. The Usos going up against Rowan and Harper in a best of three series. People um, were saying it's the best match. I didn't get to see this match. I'll definitely say it was match of the night. Um, it was really solid work from all four men. Um, you know, the first two falls were really quick. Um, first, um, Rowan and Harper went one up, and then it was tied one to one by the Usos. Uh, and then that's when they really picked up. Uh, I'm glad it shouldn't have been tied though. Huh? It shouldn't have been tied though. They should have like a ref shouldn't have counted that fucking uh, oh, second yeah. fall. He, he was like so up. far up off the mat. Yeah. But what can you do? Um But the uh you know the the match itself got a lot of length, so it probably went about twenty close to twenty minutes. Um a lot of solid work from from all four guys. Uh, the crowd was into it. The announcers were into it. The competitors were into it. Did you think that one point in time that uh, the Wyatts are gonna, Harper and Rowan were going to win? Yeah, uh, there were there were a lot of uh, a lot of opportunities. There were a lot of near falls. Um, the crowd was actually getting behind Harper and Rowan uh, towards the end because they were like, okay, you know, maybe this time they'll they'll get the win. But it was more of a a showing for the Usos. Of, you know how how determined they are to keep the titles, um, so it was really good. I, I I thoroughly enjoyed the matchup. If you missed it, I would recommend checking it out. How about you, Doug? Yeah, it was definitely good. Um, <clears throat> uh, I don't know. Do you feel like uh, do you feel like it was the right thing to do to keep the titles on the Usos? It's hard to tell. Um, they don't really have any like directions. Like I mean, not directions, but they don't have like too many teams that can go against right now. Yeah, they don't have a whole lot of options uh, as far as uh, as far as opponents. Uh, I saw one comment that 
made me think something really good would be uh, to bring the Ascension from NXT up to uh, to face the Usos. But uh, again, it would be like, where would you go after that? There's like, it seems like there would be too many hill hill teams. Yeah, you got you know Rybaxel, the Wyatts. You know that would be the Ascension. You don't really have a whole lot of heel team, or you don't actually have a whole lot of tag teams. teams. Yeah. Uh, left anymore when we're just a few months ago they were flourishing they had a lot and then they split up a couple and a couple guys left and the end it's certainly a weird situation because it's not like the usos have done anything wrong and if anything they haven't like stagnated their popularity has only grown with their title reign mm -hmm. seems like they're more they're at least as i mean they're more over now than they ever have been yeah um so it would feel weird to, to sort of cut their legs off from underneath them and take the titles off of them right now you yeah. know it's also sort of weird to like <clears throat> make the Wyatts so like ineffective. Like, what have they accomplished? Like, for such a push stable, they haven't they haven't been able to accomplish anything. They haven't beat yeah. anybody. Every time they get, uh, you know, an angle where they're like, okay, this is our target, this is our goal, they just they drop them. Yeah, I mean, like I'm talking Bray and Harper and Rowan, mm -hmm. and, like they have they haven't accomplished anything. So it's weird, like. To push them and to feature them so prominently, but to, I don't know, like, without them accomplishing anything, they're just sort of meandering and floating between feuds yeah. without, and and that's super, I don't know, it, it's hard for me to enjoy them as a, as the characters they are when they aren't accomplishing anything and they don't have clear, uh, defined they, they don't have like a clear destination they're going for it's not clear what exactly what they want and exactly what they plan to do to get it it's so vague which is i mean how are you going to play that out and still like job them out like I, I like it seems like you have to like move one way or the other right you have to like more define what they are or at least let them accomplish some things. I don't see how you do both. Yeah, and one of the things that they've been doing, you know, they've, they've been going back and forth saying, oh, it's not about wins and losses. We're just here for such and such. Well, yeah, but if you don't get any wins, then you're not going to be seen as a viable threat. Well, that's fine. I think that's a, I mean, I think that's a fine, like, line to say and a fine uh, angle to play with those dudes, so to speak. But mm -hmm. then you have to say, then they have to make it very clear even though they're not winning matches, what it is that they're accomplishing. Right. And if you can't do that, then it, then it's not enough just to say wins and losses are meaningless to, mm -hmm. to us, which I think is a fine thing to, for them to say. I actually think it works better for their character. Yeah. Because why would those dudes just show up and compete, you know, like... Right. But then clearly define what it is they hope to accomplish by, by uh, doing what they're doing, even though they aren't winning, and then show some progress to that goal, or, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's too odd. And it's one of those where... They're the kind of people who don't need the title, and if you give them the title, what are they going to do with it? Right. You know, because their character is one of those that doesn't need it to to establish itself. So, I don't know. I don't... It just makes them feel like, uh, like it feels like they fall so flat. Like, I mean, I mean, I, even if you were going to argue Bray's competition has been all top tier guys, like it feels like you would at least throw them a bone and let the Ronan and Harper, like, you know, beat, like, the tag champs or something, right? But then you also, yeah. like, you again, you also don't necessarily want to cut the Usos out because they're uh, as popular as they've ever been, you know? Yeah, and they have their Uso Crazy t-shirts to sell. I actually like the shirt. I just hate the saying Uso Crazy. <laughs> uh, just have it say just Usos yeah. or something. I like the shirt just fine. If it didn't say Uso Crazy, you yeah. know, maybe I'd buy it. Uso Crazy. How about you, Tyler? What are your thoughts on uh, Rowan and Harper? I don't know, because we talk about how, like, Bray Wyatt is, like, above, you know, he's above, like, winning the title and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Do you feel like the Rowan and um, Harper. Harper are the same way, too? Well, I mean, that's kind of what I was alluding to. It's like, you know, they, they don't really need the title, but if they got it, what would they do with it? You know, they... I don't know. Would they would they brag about being tag team champions? Because it doesn't seem like, you know, it's it seems like when they get on the mic, they're precise. Well, I say precise, but you never really know what they're saying. Um, I don't. I don't really know. It's it's kind of confusing. 
Well, I think that sort of in the way that they were playing Bray for the title, where he says, why do I want the title? Because the title is power. But then you have to explain what that power gets them and how it helps them in their quest. Like, yeah. you can't, it's not enough to just say, this belt is power and that's why we want it. Fine. But what are you going to use the power for? Mm-hmm. And what do you hope to accomplish with the power? There's nothing. They either have to be a more effective stable and for as far as wins or losses go, or they can play the wins and losses don't mean shit to us, but they have to establish why they're here and what they want and what they're going to do to get what they want. They can't, mm-hmm. they can't, I don't think you can play it both ways to my satisfaction at least. Can't keep doing this cryptic message. You have to start Why don't having just a like reason. Have it like, Hey, I just want to, we just want to, uh, go over everybody. You know, we want to show how dominant we are, you know, like, Hey, we took, we beat John Cena or, yeah, I mean that would we be did, fine. Yeah, we did. You know, I th- I think if they lose, it should be because they get themselves disqualified for you know beating down an opponent or something like that. I think right. they need to you know if if wins and losses don't matter to them, they need to prove why it doesn't matter. It's like win or lose. Yeah, we lost, but we fucking wrecked that dude. You yeah, know I mean? win or lose, we're walking out of here. You guys aren't. Right? Who's the real winner in the grand scheme of I things? Keep your you. fucking belts. So we have your fucking teeth. You yeah. know. What I mean? <laughs> I beat you, John Cena. I beat you, Chris Jericho. Or like, mm-hmm. like, hey, we're coming after you next, Big Show, or you know, whoever. Yeah, I mean, they don't necessarily have to like call someone out, but they need to, you know, as as good as of a talker Bray Wyatt is on the mic, they need to let their actions speak more. It just the whole thing lacks focus. I mean, like, um, yeah, they just have to focus. Yeah. But, uh, I don't know. They definitely can't. Definitely, like someone has to definitely say, okay, they don't get any more title shots because they've lost all their title shots. Yeah, but then it's like, okay, they'll f- have Rybaxel be the number one contenders, and they'll lose, and then okay, well, who else do we have? Well, that's a larger problem. I mean, yeah. I saw people. I saw talk of people saying, with a tag match like that, you know, how can you deny we're like in a tag team renaissance? And I was like, well, that's one feud with two teams. Like, if you're in a tag team renaissance. Mm-hmm then, you know, more tag teams should be flourishing. Right. Yeah. I mean, it is not – I don't think it's too much to ask with the amount of programming they have to build a contender to the, the titles. Like, you're – you got your – if you have a top babyface team that are the champs and you have your hill challengers, then you're building another hill team underneath those those challengers if they're not going to get the straps. Like, you're building another – like a B hill team to, mm-hmm. to that's beating all the B – the B uh, babyface teams coming up through the ranks, right? So that whenever that feud is clearly blown off, then they're clearly the new like, like uh, challengers. And I don't think that's yeah. too much to ask. I, I think you could. I, can, I think you at the very least you can build two babyface and two heel teams. I think in the three hours of Raw, two hours of SmackDown, one hour of main event, one hour of Superstars, and those seven hours, you can build somebody. You can build four. It's not too much to ask to build four teams out of that. Mm-hmm. And all they end up doing is showing recaps and replays. Hey, here's what you missed. Hey, here's what you missed. Well, you know, what's the point in watching it if you're just going to give me a recap at the end of it? So, they just need to, I, I think. I don't know what the hell they're doing with uh, Goldust and Cody Rhodes. And having the constant promos backstage. It's like somebody watched Masters of the Universe and, like, they're, like now they want to talk about the fucking Cosmic Key. But I don't even know what the fuck those dudes are talking about. <laughs> like, I saw... I, I don't think the, they know what they're talking about. Yeah, I mean, what the fuck is the cosmic key other than the thing from the He-Man movie? <laughs> I don't know. We have to find it. That's what they. That's what they're doing. It's somewhere in the cosmos, and they will find. They it. They better fucking find Dolph Lundgren and uh, <laughs> what's the bald cop dude? Who was in Masters of the Universe? I don't. The guy with the shotgun. I don't know. Sorry. Sorry, I'm old. You guys probably didn't it. <laughs> I was like 87 or something. I was like five. I saw it in the theater with my I was mom. one? <laughs> I was a big He-Man fan when I was a kid. Nice. So, uh, but yeah, but back to the matchup. Good, strong matchup. A lot of, you know, it was a really good showing from all, all the participants. Uh, Usos end up getting the win. Um, Uso crazy. Uso crazy. So, uh, next up, we got a uh, backstage segment with uh, with Seth, Seth Rollins talking about the upcoming match and the possibility of him cashing in and being the champion. And then he has attacked by Dean Ambrose, 
And they brawl around backstage. Officials pull them apart. Triple H says, I'm not letting that happen. You're not messing with my That's guy. That's your Booker T impression. Get him out of here. No, it's not. You did a little bit of it in Booker T. No, nah, Booker T's a little more lower, dog. <laughs> also, since we're talking about Booker T, can we... Can we talk about the fact that the uh, the, pan- <laughs> the panel changed their picks from the pre-show to the main event? I mean, yes. to the actual main show. Absolutely. Uh, I'm not 100 percent sh- certain, but I'm like 70 percent sure that they all had different picks from the pre-show to the main. And what do we say about percentages? Oh wait, no, this isn't a, okay. This is just your guess. Yeah, I, okay. I said I'm not sure. I, I did not make any declarations of okay. uh, percentages. Well, this is this is also just your opinion, right? It is not anything pertaining to numbers. Yeah, it's itself. just my like. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that they they changed their picks from the pre-show to the mm-hmm. main show. And I just found that super weird. Yeah. Like, you couldn't remember who you picked in the pre-show? Well, maybe after seeing what transpired over the course of the evening, they're like, you know what? It's been a crazy night. I'm changing my pick. You know what? I'm going to pick all five. <laughs> <laughs> I think John Cena, Roman Reigns, Kane, Orton, or Seth Rollins going to be champion by the end of tonight, dog. Right, right. I'm also going to throw Daniel Bryan in there. Actually, I think I think Alex Riley remembered his. Alex Riley, I think, had the same pick, and I think Book and Christian both changed their picks. <laughs> I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure somebody changed their pick. I have to go back and see if we can uh, rewatch I think, it. Well, I think Book changed from Cena in the pre-show to Orton in the, on the main show. <laughs> I may be mistaken though. They were probably told, "Hey, none of y'all pick Cena because no one will ever suspect that Cena's going to win." Well, Riley picked Reigns in the main or in the pre-show, and I think he stuck with Reigns in the main show. I think so. And I think Christian picked Kane. I don't know. At w- one point, I, I felt like I felt like they all. I felt I felt like on the pre-show they all three had a different guy. Mm-hmm. And then I know on the main show that uh, Riley stayed with Reigns, but Christian all switched to Reigns and then book like switched to Orton, which I don't think he had in the, main, on the yeah. pre-show. I don't know. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. I got someone telling me in my ear. I gotta change to Orton. <laughs> <laughs> it's possible. So, uh, so yeah, Ambrose. I could be wrong. I just I remember it that way. <laughs> so Ambrose attacks Rollins backstage, and uh, Triple H throws him out for the uh, for the trouble, which uh, leads to the uh, you know they had to speed up the night, I guess, uh, and have uh, AJ going up against Paige. What do you mean? I think I think I heard that they just wanted to. They thought about it, and they wanted to, they thought it was appealing to say that their first match was going to be uh, at SummerSlam. Yeah, yeah, I mean. You know, storyline wise, they're saying, "Well, this uh, match was supposed to be next, but I guess we'll have to uh, go okay, to the uh, next match." I so. thought you meant like from a card placement, standpoint. right? No, because this was this is when the match was supposed to happen, right. uh, Rollins and Ambrose. Uh, but you know, if it got thrown out, then it was unable to happen. So that brought on uh, AJ versus Paige for the Divas Championship. Um, this match didn't go too long. I don't think I can't. I don't remember too too much about it. Sloppy, sloppy, sloppy. They fucked up the Spirit of the Ropes. They fucked up the Sunset Bomb, and they fucked up the uh, Octopus Stretch. <laughs> uh, pr- in pretty close proximity to each other. So yeah. I was like, oh, fuck, oh, oh, oh. okay. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. there were there were a few mishaps in this pay per view, but there, were, there you know. were three in this match in particular. <laughs> but uh, you know, it's it's it didn't make it a, a terrible match. It certainly was better than the other Divas match. Um, but yeah, but is that the like stick you want to use to measure by? <laughs> these are these are the two that people are saying are the good workers. So like, yeah, you should hold them to a higher standard. This is the one that the, uh, that the internet were craving. Oh, this is gonna be such a great match, and it you know it kind of fell flat. Um, but like I said, it wasn't a bad match, but it could have gone a lot better. Um, I'm hoping at least where it's leading, um, that they're gonna have a match at SummerSlam. I hope that'll be. A better match like you know they have some time to work with one another and iron iron that out let me say this okay page headbutts fucking suck <laughs> just because you have long hair that's gonna whip doesn't mean you can whiff that that much on a fucking headbutt she whips her hair back and forth. don't she do headbutts any back fucking back. more they're they look atrocious <laughs> so. i mean i wouldn't blame her it's enough to just like not for her not to do headbutts but right. they look she whiffs so fucking like it's visible just she thinks because her hair swings that it covers up how much she misses. But like, oh, her hair. Got her with the hair whip. So, uh, so yeah. But AJ ends up retaining. Um, yeah, and then we find out on Monday night what happens with uh, with Paige a little bit later on. We'll talk about that. Uh, next matchup, we got to see Rusev going up against Jack Swagger. Um, hard-hitting matchup. I think this is uh, Rusev's longest match to date. 
Um, you know, they had a, some good hard hitting action. Uh, it looks, uh, you know, Rusev was dominant early on. Jack Swagger started mounting some offense, um, getting the ankle lock on a couple of times, working on the ankle. Uh, match you know ends what? up. I'm, I'm tired of you, Natasha and Boris. Yeah. Um, but the, uh, they end up spilling to the outside. Swagger puts the uh, the ankle lock on to, uh, to Rusev, and Rusev you know, sort of reverses it, throws Swagger into the post, gets back in the ring, and the ref counts out uh, Jack Swagger, giving Rusev the win. So uh, what do you think about the matchup? Um, I don't remember too much of it. I, rem- I don't remember thinking it was it went that well, though. No. Yeah. I really don't think like that uh, Rusev match- the Rusev matches are that great. Yeah. Oh, I, don't I don't think know. it's horrible, though. Well, I mean, he's not going to come out there and put on... I know on... he's not going to do flashy moves and stuff like that. I know what his movesets are, but I'm just not really interested in him. Yeah. He's I'm just the... in Lana. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. There's an inter- There's a reason to be Did interested in... Did you see uh, John's... Um... Report? No, 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 no. Uh, John Gear. Oh, yeah. His draw. Uh, what's that? The they both have the longest legs. Thought bubble. Yeah. yeah. That was very nice. I like that. Um, but, yeah, so... Uh, you know, apparently Lana got in some uh, some heat with the press over the comment that she said on Battleground, you know, due to, re- due to the recent events of, uh, you know, the, the plane being shot down and people were thinking it was Russia. And well, she didn't say that. She did not say that. That she, is correct. She just said due to the recent events. Yeah, which could mean re- no, she, a number of things. She but- said, I think... I think to quote her, which sounds weird to quote it this way, but I think she said to recent current events, which is like, <laughs> sounds dumb. Recent but, current events. Right. Your so. president is a wuss. Right. And they, it's stupid. You're st- they Come on, man. They, you know that's what they were referencing. Yeah. They're just, they, they played it so vague that <clears throat> they played it vague so they could be like, no, we didn't we say We never that. said it. Right. But it was clear. It was clear. In my opinion, it was clear. They just need to be careful with yeah. all stuff or like and you never know on certain things if they don't say it right, they could be canned. Well, they're not gonna be canned. They're just gonna, you know, change their gimmick up a little bit. There are there are already talks about what them doing that. What was the deal that. with Muhammad Hassan? Yeah. I mean I mean it was pretty similar. They're just going on touchy think, subjects and I Yeah, don't know. I mean I don't like uh I think that it was um I mean, we we said, oh shit, they're talking about the plane, like as it happened. So, yeah. uh, if it's clear to a bunch of dumbasses like us, then it's clear to anybody, any, anybody. <laughs> it's uh, me a dumbass. <laughs> hey man, <laughs> I'm sorry. If it's clear to a couple of dumbasses like me and Tyler and a genius like Daniel, there you go. Then it's uh, <laughs> yeah, then it's clear to anyone. We got Jenny Ray here in the podcast crew here, but uh. <laughs> I don't know, like, um, I don't know, it's, it's, uh, I don't know, I have, like, complicated feelings about it, because it's a complicated issue, I mean, yeah, yeah. it clearly got the shitstorm in the press, and, um, I don't know, I mean, like you said, wrestling has a history of doing this type of stuff with Hassan, and even, like, going back to Slaughter during the Gulf War, I mean, burning the flag, and, you know, yeah, I mean, like, should you like make light of people dying? No, you you really shouldn't. But I mean, is it what they were told to say? I don't. No. I mean, I don't know. I'm sure. I don't know. Like whoever wrote I don't that, know, yeah. Whoever was smart enough to be so vague about that would have to know that people were going to catch on. Or if they, even if it was in the unlikely event that it was unintentional, you, whoever wrote that had to be smart enough to realize it could have been interpreted that way. Yeah. I mean, it's, like, never cool to talk about people dying, I guess. But I guess, like, like, I'm the type of guy who gets, like, worked up about, like, social issues and pro wrestling a lot. And, uh, like, I can own that. Like, I know know myself. I know, like, my personal politics play, like, into, like, all my uh, opinions. uh, Like, but I do truly, deep down, ultimately do honestly believe and stand by that I don't really think anything's off limits. And, um... I guess you can get into an argument if it, if it was too soon to be appropriate because I mean yeah. people you can hear people as unfunny as the fucking Holocaust is you can hear people like make jokes about that all these years later mm-hmm. and people aren't gonna like hammer them like over like 
I mean, people will hammer them over insensitivity, but it, it's never like, you know, that, like. Calling for their head and. Right. It's kind of like, well, that's kind of a shithead thing to say. I mean, yeah. like, I mean, people still like make those jokes, but I guess, I guess like what I, what I feel like I've never been a Saturday night live guy, but like, so I don't really know, but like, how do people like Saturday Night Live get away? I feel like if if like uh, how do they handle the sensitive stuff like that? Because you know they they a lot of their shtick is current events, right? Yeah, they do handle a lot of current events, a lot of political things, and so, it's all satire and it's supposed to be humorous. But I think for certain events, probably like this, they tend to way. tend to stay away from it. Okay. And then like maybe a few months down the road, they might make like a little jab, and be like, oh, you know, you're such and such is going down faster, you know, something right. like that. But um, but I think it's more of a sort of common sense kind of thing where it's like, okay, you know, we're having some major political issues going on between, you know, the United States, UK, Ukraine, and Russia, you know, and something like this happens, we don't want to be breaking, you know, we, let's walk on eggshells, okay? Let's take take it easy, you know. I know... It's oh, people think it's wrestling. It's just entertainment. It's all. It's all. You know. It's it's for fun. Well, ultimately, but, it is. Yeah. But you don't want that one person to be like this guy. You know. Well, I don't know. Do you, is it to you more of a time sensitive th sensitivity thing, like a too soon type of thing? Like because people make tasteless jokes. Yeah. About the past, and although you can look and be like, okay, that's fucking tasteless, but. It's, all it's not always shock like factor. It's not necessarily the media shitstorm. Yeah, but like, I mean, even so, like, I think it's about responsibility and like storytelling. Like, okay, just for instance, like, I'm the type of guy who gets worked up over because of personal politics. I'll, I'll, I will get worked up over like perceived racism or homophobia or sexism mm -hmm. in wrestling. And I mean, I know that you can go back on these shows and listen to me, like, get all worked up about this stuff. And it's and I and I I believe that truly, and that's why I get so worked up about them. But like ultimately, I don't necessarily believe it's like off limits for bad guys to to be bad guys. I think what I sort of like feel like where I where it gets complicated is responsibility and storytelling. Like you want to see these people like get theirs and like yeah. see how you know you don't prosper from being this big of a shitbag. You know, yeah. like. So, like, I think is it, like, is it, for me, it gets complicated where is it, okay, in the long run, so long as they get theirs and it's proven that, like, the right thing, like, prevails, right? right. And um, and that's even weirder in this situation because it just comes off, even if they flipped that and just put swagger over to be like, okay, that shitbag who's talking about the planes, mm -hmm. uh, that just comes off as, like, really hollow, like, patriotic like USA beating their chest shit too so yeah. it's like super weird I mean I do ultimately feel like nothing's off limits but I'm like am so I'm the same guy who's gonna get worked up over this stuff and like be like fuck those assholes like right but like you know like you said the whole you know nothing is off limits when uh Jerry Lawler's mother passed away and well, the very next night Michael Cole you know made that jab about it and everyone was like this is unacceptable but the thing is, well, is the, that the Cole, difference between that is well, like uh, the thing is that Cole went to Lawler and said, "Is it okay for us to say this? You know, like if it's if it's too much, won't say it, no problem." With this is, you know, you're supposed to be a representative of a country that has that is being accused of doing something pretty bad, um, and so for you to come out there and be like, "Y'all aren't doing anything about it," you know, that's you're you're speaking on behalf of what you're supposed to be representing which could just be in the wrong place, the wrong time kind of thing, you know? Well, I mean, the reason I don't, like, the reason I think that's not apples to apples is because, like, everybody has a mom who's all, who's going to die, like, you know what I mean? Right. And the same thing with the Lawler, how heart attack sensitivity, like, the reason, like, I think that is, like, not even questionable if it's in good taste or not is because like everyone anybody anybody can have a heart attack yeah. like you know that's why i feel like that's a different league of, of thing than like the type of thing we're talking about right uh, i don't know like ultimately i have i just 
I don't know. I don't know the answer. I ultimately, I feel like nothing is truly off limits so long as it's done responsibly. And I feel like if it's a question of like you play the story off responsibly or not, because I don't know. Like this is an extreme example, but like say you make a movie about like where someone gets raped. Well, like, like. To me, like to be a responsible like movie maker, you got to make sure like the rapist doesn't get away and like it's just fine in the end. Mm-hmm. Like, right? I think it's okay. I think it's okay to to use that in a movie to make a statement, to to show how how that can fuck someone's life up that's raped, and also prove that like is not is not you can't be raping people. Like you put you can play those for both ways, right? Right. But you but if you don't like show like the rape if you if the rapist just gets off in the end then it's like not responsible to story because impressionable people are just going to be like well you can rape people if you can that's get fine. away with it so can i right so there's no repercussions of this so but i mean i i don't think that so it's this is an extreme example but i'm saying like i don't think you can't portray like a rape in a movie or something to, but you have to do it responsibly right mm-hmm. i mean I guess that's my feelings in a nutshell. Like, I don't know, like, if I'm, like, reaching to make a point here, but, <laughs> like, I feel like you can you can use things, and you can use things that even rile me up. Like, you can you can go listen. If listeners of this show know I'll get, like, riled up over things I perceive as, like, using homophobia and angles and shit like that. I'll be ranting for, and I know that, like, a part of that is just me, like, reacting how they so they want people. I, I, I can get, like, worked on just like anybody, you know? Mm-hmm. But... I don't know. I just think it's uh, it's weird. Like it's a it's a weird line. It's like you. Ultimately, I don't think like that you should take things off the table in storytelling. Yeah. I don't think you can censor people in the in the broader term. But I just I guess it's in oh. how you do it. I mean, this is definitely bad taste. I don't think anyone's arguing this is good taste. It's just you know, can if, you do it? If, can you do it or not? If word comes out that you know such and such happens, everything's going to be okay in the long run. Well, Say in a couple weeks you want to make that joke. Yeah, sure, go ahead. But right now it's it's still a very hot case. It, like very much so. all, all the news and media is talking about it right now. So it's a well, very Well, it's not going to get better. Those 300 people are dead. They're not coming. Back. Right. But and what I'm saying drop the the Vladimir Putin thing. Don't talk about him. Yeah, just drop that, you know. We're we're Well, I mean, but but like I don't know. You are, are like to say that you have to you have to think of something else. I mean, no, I mean, you have to, like, retroactively, like, I mean, like, did you say, you have to put yourself in this position, like, every time it happens, though, not just, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, can you, how did you feel about, or maybe you were younger, but still, like, I mean, you're still got to, like, analyze everything. Like, you got to look at, um, God. I mean, you got to go back to, like, Sergeant Slaughter. I mean, you can't be like... You can't give one a pass and the other, and I know that you can't go back in time, but I'm just can't. But I'm just saying you can't like write one off and then like not the other because I he may, oh, Sergeant Slaughter may have never said motherfuckers are dying in the Gulf War, but hey, everyone knows motherfuckers died in the Gulf War. I mean, like people died. I mean, there ain't ever. <laughs> in my opinion, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't get rid of him or anything like that. Like, hey, I think we need to just move away a little bit from this topic or don't like it was just it. it was just a bad topic to talk yeah, about for sure, for sure. Yeah. that's that's you know that's would, the simplest way of putting say, it hey, guess what? okay we gotta get rid of you or anything like that i'm not saying anything like that and you can yeah you can make the the, the claim you know nothing is off limits everything is you know everything is okay but like i said we're we're in a sensitive part of time right now where we don't know what's going to happen and we're hoping that everything kind of Simmer down for a little bit and goes we back want, to. We want to see Lana. So. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't. I don't at all disagree with you. I'm not arguing against you. I'm saying. I'm just saying that my 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 true feelings all the way around the fucking issue are. I honestly don't believe anything's off the table. I honestly right. think it's fucked but up this, too. Though, but you know? this was just too soon. It was very. You know. It's, sure. Like I said, it is a red hot topic right now. Sure. Um, People don is not fucking cool. Like ever. Yeah. Well, it's it's the accusations of who's responsible for that happening. And so if you're going to come out and say it, y'all didn't do anything about this. No, that like, that's not what we need to have happen right now. See, I think that's, I think the the human life is like the ultimate issue. I don't think it's who you're saying is the fault of. To me, the sensitivity is not like a, you, you guys are the, or it's an, 
because you guys are pussies this happened. That that's not to me what anyone needs to get worked up about. To me, that's bullshit patriotism stuff. To me, like the sensitive thing is like people died. People died. Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, that's to me where I was like, yeah, okay, that's fucked up. And I don't I, like. I, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm not saying it's it's cool. I'm just saying like I ha like I'm trying to make sense in my own head for, of my complicated feelings of I don't ultimately believe anything should be taken off and also saying i mean you were there i said it when it happens like that's fucked up did mm-hmm. they just do that i mean like i'm trying to make sense of my own head of like both sides of my feelings at least, you right know yeah but i don't know it's just like i said it, it's it's a very touchy subject right now um and they probably sh- they probably should have been a little more responsible and not done that angle just because of how touchy it is right now sure um you know wait a if if you want to wait a week or two, okay, somewhat, but it was just it was poor timing. Um, but back into uh, back to battleground, um, you know, Rusev does end up getting the victory uh, via countout, and it looks like they are gonna um, sort of end the uh, Jack Swagger Rusev feud for the moment uh, due to the tension. So uh, so for the time being, uh, that feud will be done with. Um, so, but, uh, moving on from that next up, we got to see, uh, Seth Rollins come out and, uh, ask for the, uh, for the proclamation that he was the victor due to forfeit of Dean Ambrose not being in the building. Uh, Justin Roberts says, you know, here's your winner, Mr. Money in the Bank, Seth Rollins, ref raises his hand, gets ready to leave and Ambrose attacks him and they have, uh, they have quite the brawl, uh, having to be pulled apart by the officials and the referees, and uh, they've managed to get each other a couple more times, and have to be pulled apart and dragged uh, all the way up, you know, to the Titan Tron and away from one another. Um, I really like the brawl. I thought it was, uh, you know, it's one of those. It's definitely going to be one of the stories of the summer: the Rollins versus Ambrose chasing one another. Um, I don't know. What do you think, Doug? Yeah, I mean, I think they, in part, held off on it just because they wanted to make it more of a special thing when it does happen yeah i mean they're get, they're touching each other uh but in a square burst i mean mm-hmm. these guys aren't really getting a piece of each other so uh i think they're gonna you know and when they finally try to do, make SummerSlam gonna... special you know yeah and then when they finally do get a hold of one another they're gonna just gonna you know tear the place down so uh tyler when did you come in um and okay Michael. uh what, did, what were your thoughts on uh the rollins and ambrose battle or brawl I don't remember that much. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, we'll move on from there. The next up, we got to see uh, Chris Jericho versus Bray Wyatt. Uh, all three of us picking Bray Wyatt to win this one. Uh, but they ended up giving the w- uh, victory to Jericho. Uh, kind of a shocker. This I felt like this match, you know, a lot of people were hyping it up because of the uh, the match that they had in NXT. Um, I, I've, did you watch that match? I did not, but uh, I felt like this match wasn't all that great. Uh you know, I felt like the the start of the pay per view started off so strong. The second hour, I felt like they they kind of just died died down a little bit. Uh, you know, the matches were okay, but um, you know, I wasn't I wasn't too into this matchup. I mean, ultimately it was fine, but it was definitely felt underwhelming. Yeah. I mean, I I could I couldn't like pick apart like things like that were actively bad like. They fucked up this, and why did they make this choice here? But it, it just felt like lackluster, like mm-hmm. like uh, people. If it just feels like you would expect more from these dudes, I, I don't the know. The crowd wasn't too big into it, and the finish was weird. Like honestly, like I didn't expect that finish. Like yeah. I don't know. Like I mean, this g- rewind to rewind. <laughs> <laughs> Go back to what we were talking about earlier about them being ineffective, like as a stable. Mm-hmm. And lacking like focus, but uh, yeah, it was just weird, and it felt like it underdelivered. And it was actually uh, reported that uh, that this that the ending was a rewrite that Wyatt was supposed to get the win, right? Uh, but they decided no, let's let's have the bad guy lose this one and uh, say, oh, this isn't over yet. Yeah, but see, that's so weird because. But it's not about wins and losses. Well, I mean that they're <laughs> just further making it weird and fucked up by saying that. But I mean. Like, why would, I guess they had to do some bullshit reason, like, why they would, like, wh- Jericho has nothing left to prove. That's why they had to do some stupid, like, backstage skit, because he's already beat him. Like, flat yeah. out. Clean, it wasn't even an argument. There was no, like, 
There's no outside interference. Yeah. There's no as much as distractions. You as much as you don't want to do a like a like a fuck finish on a pay per view, like having like Harper and Rowan come in and beat the fuck out of them would make more sense than this. You yeah. know what I mean? And just getting the DQ. You know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It always to me it always doesn't make sense. Like if you if you're trying to prolong the feud, it never makes sense for the baby face to go over in the in the opening match for me. Yeah. I don't know, like, because to me, it just has, like, he's proved his point. He beat you. What has he got left to prove? Right. So, uh... Then but, you have to come up with bullshit reasons <laughs> yeah. for them to keep feuding. Oh, you want to have us on the highlight reel? We're going to attack you backstage. Yeah, how dumb is that? That was actually filmed at Battleground because Jericho was off promoting his new album that's coming out. Yeah, so. it just seems weird that he would, like, want to... That, that he his his... He would beat him and then want to have him on the highlight reel the next day. Like that's what that's a weird thing to do, right? I guess he wanted to talk about the loss. How does it feel, man? How's it feel to lose to me? Yeah. Was it? I mean, was it okay? Did it go how you expected? You know, I know you were hoping to win, but right, you did. You know, how'd that? How'd that go, baby? <laughs> Just so weird, like right. And then he goes to, then Bray Wyatt goes to talk, and he's like, "Would you please shut the hell up? Because this is Raw, is Jericho, baby." <laughs> and then he hosts a podcast. So, uh, <laughs> gotta go through all the cliches. But, uh, that only works if they, like, murder him in the ring, like, right after he spouts <laughs> off all that shit. They had to, like, fucking tear this man limb from limb after that, you know? <laughs> Maybe that's why they beat him up backstage. Like, the they just before. let him do all his corny shit, like, let, hi- let him keep interrupting them, like, mm-hmm. when they're about to say something. They wait for him to say all his, spout his catchphrase, and then they're just like, fuck this dude, and they kill him in the ring. Yeah. Just demolish him. But, uh, but yeah, Jericho gets the win, uh, taking us to a backstage or parking lot segment, I guess, with Rollins getting ready to leave the building. And he has security escorting him out, making sure he gets to his car okay. I and this, guys. I yeah, I, I, I've, I, I Whoa, see my car. I'm okay. What's that noise? Yeah, you know, just really s- kind of silly. But, uh, you know, at, at first glance, I was like, trunk's open. You can see, the, you can see that the trunk of the car is, uh, is unlocked. Um, so, uh, you know, Rollins is kind of looking around and the trunk of the car flies open and oh, it's Dean Ambrose and the brawl continues and, uh, Rollins scrambles to get in the car and drives off. So, uh, yeah, so Rollins would not be cashing in. On they just let night. those dudes get in those fucking cars and drive like pricks, right? Yeah. Because I would be like, lo- those would, have got to be rentals. <laughs> I mean, I don't think that they could have uh, made some weird cut. Of that, where that was like a stunt driver or anything, they just let like Seth Rollins like just floor it, <laughs> like just get like, the hell out. Like, what if he fucks up and like rams into their fucking like trailer that has all their <laughs> shit in it, you know? And everyone's like, and then the like the pay per view blacks out. Everyone's looking at Seth Rollins like a big fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> this is coming out your. Back. You took out the satellite, man. The hell I mean, are you there, doing? There's no way that was one shot, right? They couldn't have cut together where that was a. They didn't cut. So it, it was him doing it, right? Yeah. So it was like a stunt. From the time driving. he's walking out with the security guard, because it's it's just the one, one shot, camera one shot, okay. following him, looking at the looking at the thing. Then oh, oh. Would oh, you, you so trust Seth the Rollins? To, you know that's what that? they do. Yeah. They get the camera. Like, I got you. Yeah. I have a seizure. Would you trust Seth Rollins to do that? I mean. I mean, it, it probably wasn't really that dangerous. He just backed up fast and pulled off, but like. What if he fucked up and like ran over somebody or something? Yeah, right? overcompensated the right. wheel turning, and yeah. he's not like a professional driver by any account. No, but I mean, yeah. he probably has a driver's license, but he doesn't have a drive like. It makes pr- me worry how he drives in real life. He doesn't have a drive like, like a that. prick license. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like a prick license. <laughs> I'm sure they had, uh, you know, EM- EMTs on standby just in case in the local fire department. And he's fine. He's okay. Yeah. It went off without a hitch. So, yeah. So uh, I was half expecting Ambrose when uh, Rollins was backing up to just like lift up the trunk, hop in, and like close the close the trunk as uh, as Rollins was driving away. But uh, anyways, so next up we got to see the uh, the battle royal to determine the new Intercontinental Champion, and uh, you know, your boy Kali dropping chops. Uh, but unfortunately, he was, was chopping all those motherfuckers. Here's a chop for you. Here's a chop for you. <laughs> he eliminated two you. people, but he should. No, he did. He did the up. awesome like Hulk up thing where everyone got on him and he just like flicked them all off. Like that's what the throwing <laughs> the, the arms awesome out. He flicked them all off and they all went over the ropes. <laughs> he came out like the a shortest house of battle fire. royal in history. <laughs> 
He eliminates 19 men with one. I'm not going to lie. We popped or 18 men. We popped yeah. pretty hard because he is going, he got so many chops and he eliminated yeah. like two dudes off the chop back. You, chop like, you, chop oh, you, yes. fuck you, fuck you. I know what Tyler's favorite moment of the of the Battle Royal was. And it wasn't the chops. It was right at the start when Kali's right in the middle and he's doing <laughs> he's doing, doing the I didn't little, know what the fuck he does. Oh. Kali doesn't move like that. Okay. Well, you gotta see what Daniel's doing right yeah. now. But it looked like I don't know what he was about <laughs> to do. Like, okay, he's glitching. Yeah, he's glitching. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, it was like all these motherfuckers about to jump me. Yep. Chop you, chop you, fuck your face up. <laughs> so, um, RVD not in the uh, in the battle royal due to injury. They haven't disclosed what the injury was, but just another person not to not get eliminated. So, um, what were your thoughts on the uh, on the battle royal? I know you're super excited about uh, the f- um, the awesome Kofi spot. Oh yeah, uh, another another Kofi spot. Battle Royal, gotta have it, right? So, I mean, we got like perverse enjoyment out of Kali going off in the the, <laughs> the opening. Because... My girlfriend was oh. wondering what was happening. Like, she asked me the other day. She was like, "What were they all screaming about?" She was like, "I was like worried about something." We we're cheering on Kali. <laughs> oh, another thing to point out though, it looked like I like. One, I like how one of the things that we've gotten out of doing this show is like a perverse enjoyment in Kali matches just because <laughs> Seth decided to make a crusade for Kali for the fucking no reason. And yeah. now, like, like now no, is someone for you to watch for. Like, that, don't you like sort of like, uh, doesn't it feel like great that like, you know, that almost no other person in the world's <laughs> having that experience and watching that like right yeah, there yeah. like Everyone's nobody like, like nobody oh, is- this motherfucker is on tv we're like yes this guy's here and he's gonna chop your fucking just head because, off just because seth decided to like crusade for collie and we got some fucked up enjoyment out of it like nobody else had that experience but us where we were like genuinely for like the two o- minutes cheering collie the, the fuck o- on the only people who were excited to see great collie are our listeners and you guys <laughs> You gotta admit, was, Everyone else awesome. is like, why is Kali still there? I, look, I know it's getting like a big played out and stuff, but like, like in a very honest way, like I am like very happy that for whatever Seth decided to do that I got like <laughs> two minutes of like pure joy out of a Kali Battle Royal. <laughs> I'm, I'm being super serious about that. Like no one had that experience but us watching that right then. So uh, uh, yeah, thanks. I mean, I know it's like uh, this whole thing and it's played out and like, I don't know, you know, but I mean, it's. I don't know. Time to end it. For those two minutes, it was fucking cool. I mean, yeah, it like, was. You know, right on. We're like, oh, bullshit. They eliminate him. Bullshit. We're bullshit. like, those fucking pussies going to team up on Kali. And they like, threw him off. We're like, oh. <laughs> threw him off. He was like, he was dishing chopping. out chops like they were fucking playing cards. He's like, chop for you, chop for me. Uh, another thing that uh, I remembered from this match was like, Ziggler, man, he fucked up. Uh, he bumped weird or whatever. Like, he almost. Hurt himself at least twice. Oh yeah, with uh, with Del Rio. or was it Del Rio? Del Rio. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> like damn man, like slow your roll. Take it easy. Stop uh, stop being the bump freak. So um, but yeah, the match comes down to uh, to what we think is just Sheamus and Ziggler. Uh, crowd solidly behind we like, Ziggler on this we're one. Like, we're all for Bo, and then he got eliminated. We're like, Miz is staying outside a lot. Okay, Miz is gonna take it. Yeah. Kind of sad, but uh, but Miz, like Tyler said, hiding outside the ring, and uh, gets the surprise. He and came to play. He did come to play, yes, and he ended up becoming the new Intercontinental Champion. So uh, thoughts on Miz as your new Intercontinental Champion, three-time Intercontinental All Champion. All right, they changed up his gimmick so much. He has the uh, he's a movie star now. He's uh, got the trailer band, and he's wearing sunglasses. He's awesome. No, I, I mean, I don't know what the hell they're going to do with him. I really don't. Like, uh, what's going to be different? I mean. Hmm. I how know. about you? How about you, Doug? What do you mean? What are they going to do with Miz? Thoughts Thoughts on Miz winning and where they're going to take him. Uh, <laughs> is he going to feud with Ziggler in a bit? I mean, supposedly yeah. they wanted to put the title on Ziggler, but they ended up putting it on Miz just because he's doing the media rounds for his movie. And so he'd have the belt with him or whatever. Silly. I would have rather... Give it to Ziggler to Miz. I really don't want any of both those guys to have it, but I would have picked Ziggler over Miz. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to look at Miz with fresh eyes when they're doing 
uh, such a closely related like thing as they've they've been doing with him for so long. I mean, there's really not much different there. And if they gave it like a fresh new take, I mean, I I think he could still be a hill if you want him to be, but do but do it in a different way. It's hard to like. It's hard for me to look at him with fresh eyes and not remember all the shitty stuff when he's <laughs> like picking up right where he left off. You know what I mean? Right. Like if you if they changed his look or his gimmick at least slightly. And you know maybe I can give this guy another chance, but Change it's so hard. It's so hard to do that, man. Yeah. He, he's so associated with his really shitty run that, before his movie, you know. Mm-hmm. But terrible. Daniel <laughs> wants to let everyone know he is going to pick up the Marine Three when it comes out on DVD. I'd watch it, and I'll but... throw it down Did the aisle. Did you see aisle. that Ben posted? Like, I guess he got a deal with, like all the WWE <laughs> movies. He picked up like the Chaperone. He got the Chaperone, yeah. Uh, was Knucklehead one of them? Yeah. yeah. Marine, one of the Marines. I guess. There's something else. It was like one of the John Cena movies that didn't go anywhere. But they plugged the hell out of it. I kind of really want to see the Chaperone. Oh, the though. Bounty Hunter one? I didn't see that one. I've seen the Marine with Cena, but I haven't seen the Bounty Hunter one where he's got like brothers or whatever. Yeah. Oh, no, I haven't seen that one. I, I've seen the first Marine. I haven't seen the second one. The one with Ted DiBiase. Mm-hmm. And I haven't seen that Columbia one with uh, Kennedy. That was uh, behind enemy lines, though. Oh yeah, and then uh, this new movie come out. It's with uh, what's his face, Rowan. Uh, Rowan. Uh, Roman Reigns. No, it's actually not him, but it's just a guy that looks oh, like. Oh, is him. that the guy that's uh, gonna be playing the new Aquaman? Mm. I don't know the guy's name. Yeah, I know he's. Uh, yeah. Uh, what's her name's husband? At least somebody seen. Was it the one? I know he's not main star in it, but the guy, uh, Dead Man Down. And then they have the call with Halle Berry and the little part of David Otunga. And, and Wade Barrett. Wade Barrett was in Dead Man Down. Oh, yeah, that's right. And don't forget Orton's ravishing role where he'll go to the papers if he has to. Wasn't he in the one of the Marines? No. He was actually rejected. Oh yeah, yeah. so yeah. it was so in this marine, it's it's Miz and Summer Ray, right? Yes. So Summer Ray's in the marine too. Not and, not uh, there were mean two number marine two, four. but T O. You remember we were talking yes. about total? She is also in the marine. Remember we were talking about total divas? How like that guy in backstage was talking about? Hey, congrats! Like, how's your dog? How's that? Hey, Summer Ray is in the marine three. Everyone give her like four or four, whatever. Yeah. Oh yeah, remember? I do remember that now. Yeah. Uh, and is now, she no. mi- is she Mrs. Love Interest in the movie? I think she's one of the like snipers or something like that. Wow, yeah, that's progressive WWE. <laughs> <Wait a second. laughs> no, uh, so yeah, Miz wins the battle royal becomes the new movie night coming champion. up. We're watch no, we are not watching a single one. I want to watch the chaperone. You guys have fun I'm with serious. that. I'm not Me watching you. it. No. Tyler's Tyler's bachelor party. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sit in and watch the, the chaperone. Oh my god. Chaperone, no. Napoleon Dynamite. We're gonna get fucked up. <laughs> watch the chaperone. <laughs> it's a good movie. God. Look at the way that base has the hair is like that. That's so weird. So uh yeah, that takes us into the main event. Fatal four way, WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Cena, Orton, Kane, and Reigns. Um I don't know. I didn't think it was all that great of a match. It was okay. it was okay. But it didn't have any like lasting impression with me going. Oh my god, you have to see this match! Um, Superman punch. Yeah, Superman punch, choke slams, AAs, and RKOs, and STFs, and er thing. So, Doug, what do you think about this matchup? Not that great. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I can't think of a match on the pay per view I really enjoyed other than the tag match. Yeah. How about you, Tyler? Meh. There's nothing I could uh. I mean, I, I remember what went down, but there's nothing I can, like, recite. Like, hey, I enjoyed this or whatever. Hey, just there. it could have been worse. Uh, they did tease uh, Cena and Reigns a couple times where Cena was like, yeah, now let's find out. You know, let's, let's you know, duke it out and see what happens. And then, you know, Cena or, I'm sorry, Orton and, and Kane would come in and attack and prevent that from happening. So, but um, Cena ends up getting the victory to the surprise of no one except the commentators. Roman Reigns was crying. Roman Reigns was upset and not too happy about it. So Cena retains, and that's how we close out Battleground. Overall thoughts on Battleground? I yeah, man, kind of a dud. Yeah, and it had some okay moments. 
Uh, I like the brawl. I like the uh, the tag match. I like the rosebuds. Rosebuds, maybe. Uh, so that takes us into uh, what happened on Raw. Uh, we kick things off with Triple H coming out saying he's going to announce a new number one contender. He just wants people to show up and show why, basically. Orton comes out and it's like, it's been four months. I haven't gotten my title shot. And Kane's like, well, I'm deserving well, the title. Rematch. It was rematch. It rematch, yeah. Um, you know, Kane comes out and then Reigns comes out all saying they deserve the, the be the number one contender. Be the front runner. They like to say that one quite a bit. Um, and that leads into a two on one handicap match between Orton and Kane versus Roman Reigns. What are your thoughts on that match? Nothing. I don't know if I have any. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't, it was wasn't hot shit. Yeah. How about you, Tyler? Nothing. Nothing to add. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta say, just say no. No. There you go. Because they can't. They can't. Here you shake your head. Yeah, they can. <laughs> oh, he must have shook his head. Oh, oh, that's clearly. Okay, so uh, so Reigns ends up getting the victory. Big whoop. Uh, next up, we got to see a uh, four-on-one handicap match. Uh, Alicia Fox, Eva Marie Cameron, and Rosa Mendez going up against Nikki Bella. And as Nikki Bella's coming out, she notices her sister is in the front row. Hey. Who expected this? Uh, runs over, gives Bria a hug. You didn't expect and this. No one expected it. You didn't expect her to be sitting in the crowd. That no, I didn't. Surprise. It was a surprise shocker of the year. OMG moment. Uh, Stephanie McMahon comes out. You're being out. sarcastic, but I know that you didn't actually expect her to be sitting in the front row. No like, one really expected her. Like, to be dude, how did she get front row seats? Um, she got the hookup from Nikki. What do you mean, how? I guess so. That's plausible. Maybe that's how Sign Guy does it. I don't know. It's plausible. Yeah, it is. So, um, so yeah. So Stephanie McMahon comes out. And it's like, oh, how's it feel to be sitting on the sidelines and watching, you know, because you're you gave that all up for your husband who's now injured. Man, you guys are a bunch of losers. Ha ha ha. And then she starts to turn around and Nikki's like, you're such a bitch. And the fans are like, oh, that was Brie. Brie. Yeah, that's what. Yeah. So Brie is like, you're such a bitch. And the fans are like, oh. Okay, I know the fella guy was a plant because I could tell by the way he was shielding, but the white dude with the extremely short hair who made the super exaggerated oh. face, was that guy a plant or a no. guy who was just super excited to hear the word bitch come out of yeah, him? I, th I think he was just super excited. <laughs> I think fella, the guy in the Seamus shirt was definitely a plant because he was shielding her even in trying to act like he didn't look like he was shielding her. Oh, people. yeah. But that guy, I wasn't even paying attention. Who was just like super excited <laughs> about it? Oh my god, he said it. She said it. It was like, no, she, uh, -uh no, she did. <laughs> Listen here, girlfriend. So, uh, so yeah. So Stephanie McMahon turns around. They're and like, super excited because they got to hear a double bitch. Yeah. So, uh, so Bree grabs the microphone and is like, you know what you are? I'll tell you what you are. You're a vindictive, egotistical bitch. So, and then Stephanie slaps her and they. Carry her out of the arena. Get out of here. I have a ticket. So, yeah, pretty much. I have a ticket. You can't, you know, do anything. So, uh, yeah, and then they all beat down all the divas, beat down Nikki, and get the pin. It's so weird because it in. feels like Eva Marie was just like buds with yep, them. They were. I mean, I guess she's a career girl and she's trying to make her way. She's trying the to fit in. Yeah. I mean, I guess you could explain that away, but it does feel weird because she was just friends with them. <laughs> By the way, did either of you guys get to see the video that WWE put out with uh, Eva Marie where the, she reads the catchphrases of superstars in a, quote, sexy manner? No. Oh, my God, no, no, dude. No. It is so awful. It's like... Some, what are some of the catchphrases that she They uses? do The Rock, and she's like, if you smell what The Rock is cooking. And they're like... You know, they're playing, like, some little saxophone music, you know, down by the fire or something. <laughs> something you see on uh, Cinemax late at night or something like that. And they're, like, doing the little fade panaways, like, after she gets done saying it. And then, you know, you hear in the background, you know, uh, and that's the bottom line. And then she's like, and that's the bottom line. And it's, like, so ridiculous. Are these, like, commercial takes between stuff on the network? No, it was just something that they just put out on the website. They were just like, here's the video. <laughs> yeah, they're like, yeah, oh, they're right you know, here. even even she makes everything red hot, even catchphrases. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, so terrible. So cheesy. And, oh, it's bad. 
so bad. She, didn't she only the, did the rock she stuff? Do what, uh, she did like two and a half minutes of it. Of just rock stuff? No. Of like, anybody? Of, did she do her own? All right, everything? No, she didn't do she that. Didn't do the How Al the fuck Snow, are you not huh? going to do your own? She didn't do Al Snow's, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty funny, actually, if she were to do that. Uh, but no, it was, uh, it was so ridiculous and god awful, but it's, I don't know. It's just bad. So bad. We'll watch it after this. Yeah, we'll try to. So, uh, yeah, anyway. Do. My name is Paul Heyman. <laughs> <laughs> My name. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. This so, chick's uh, name is Paul Heyman. Yeah. It's, it's not chick's name is Paul. What's up with She's that? She's saying her name is Paul Heyman. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, my gosh. They're watching this. Yeah, I know, right? Um, Whatever. I'm not going through that much trouble. Uh, so next up, we got to see Bo Dallas going up against Damian Sandow dressed as LeBron Jordan. Ha ha, sports reference. Because LeBron Jordan was in Miami, and then he went to Cleveland. So let's make fun of that because we're in Miami. You mean LeBron James? Yeah, LeBron James. Le- what did I say? LeBron Jordan. <laughs> LeBron. God, <laughs> what is sense. up with my head right now? The non-sports guy is just sports to you. <laughs> <laughs> it was our discussion. It, you know, we're wow. off on you, and you're like, oh, I know sports now. So, uh... Yeah. That's my God, favorite player. What the LeBron hell is Jordan. wrong with it? I'm tired. So, um. LJ! <laughs> Michael so, James. Well, everyone's comparing him to Michael Jordan, so there you go. Um, but yeah, Bo Dallas versus Damian Sandow. Anything to really take away from it? No, I'm still, I'm still being proud of us for correcting you. Yeah. yeah. I'm proud of you guys, too. I appreciate that. That's going to be stuck in my head now. LeBron Jordan. LeBron Jordan, yeah. So, uh, so Bo Dallas, still undefeated. Good stuff. Uh, next up, we got the highlight reel with, uh, with Bray Wyatt. We don't Wyatt. have the highlight reel. We don't have the highlight reel because Chris Jericho is not in attendance. So, they show the clip of, um, it's supposed to be an app exclusive or whatever of, uh, what is it, just uh, Chris Jericho in the back and the Wyatts beat him up? Yeah, but that was filmed at Battleground, actually. Was that really? <laughs> yeah. Because he, uh, because Jericho was off Not promoting. Not kayfabe wise, though. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's so terrible. It's like the little jazz music and the guitar and all kinds of stupid. Like, look at this. I mean, it's ridiculous. <laughs> He's doing Bret Hart. So stupid. So cheesy. I like her dusty. <laughs> Can I get a hell yeah? What? What? Woo. <laughs> this is a like vintage. Woo. So terrible. <laughs> so yeah, so that's just. <laughs> Wait, we gotta hear this one. <laughs> it's time. It is not Vader time. Invader time. What? <laughs> How have we not done with this with Tyler yet? A <laughs> bear makes everything hot. <laughs> we could definitely do something like that. <laughs> we could be the first to parody it. So yeah, so there you go. Eva Marie <laughs> thinking she makes everything hot. So overall thoughts on that? We can get away with Aber doing this. Yeah, Aber, you in? Why not? All right. He does the sexy voice too. He's like, dude, he's talking like she's talking. <laughs> <laughs> can he wear the wig? <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, so Bray Wyatt cuts a promo saying, I'm um, all about war. You know, if you want to go to war, you better dig two graves. Bray Wyatt was saying something yourself, sexy about... was saying it's sexy-like, and he had the lights on him. He's like, yeah. Follow, Follow the buzzards. Buzzard. So, uh, <laughs> so terrible. Um, so, yeah. Any, you know, we've talked several times about Bray Wyatt cutting the promo. What is he actually saying? Did he actually say anything this time? Yeah, I don't remember the promo at this point. Okay. Well, he was basically talking about how he's... All know. I remember was, hey, uh, Jericho, everyone... Or was it Save Us, Chris Jericho? Save Us. 
Well, it always was, repeats that, though. Yeah. So, nothing. Where's your savior now? And then he said something about, I've been here all along. Mm-hmm. Like, you should follow me. Yep. And the buzzards. Don't and forget the buzzards. The buzzards. Shoot so, the buzzard. Those poor buzzards. They're just looking for a meal. So, next up, we got to see Dolph Ziggler going up against the Miz. Um, this was probably the, the better match of the night. Um, somewhat solid work from, from both guys. And uh, Ziggler ends up getting the victory. But uh, anything to really take away from it? No, I'm going to get a drink. Oh, okay. Hey, give um, me a bottle of water. Yeah, search the ice chest and see if there's yeah. some drinks in there. Bring me one, too. Um, so, Tyler, any thoughts on Dolph Ziggler versus The Miz? Uh, I really don't remember that much. Maybe I walked out, whatever, but uh, you said it was pretty good, huh? Yeah, it was all right. It wasn't It wasn't a terrible match. The crowd was definitely into it. The crowd was definitely into Ziggler. Ziggler won, right? Yes. Making the champ look strong, losing his first match. So, and then after so the match, be the feud. yeah, probably for SummerSlam. And after the match, Miz told Justin Roberts to announce oh, yeah. that he was still the champion. Still the champion. So, whatever. But uh, after that, we got to see a backstage segment uh, with the authority. And Cesaro comes up saying he is no longer a Paul well, Heyman it guy. Well, out, you know, uh, Rollins and Triple H talking like, yeah. how he should be the guy that's picked. And yeah. Triple H is like, no, we have all the cards or whatever. Like, no, you shouldn't be picked. And that's when Cesaro comes up. So why why do you think they're dropping him from Paul Heyman? I know that Lesnar's coming back, but still, why do you drop him? Well, there's talks about turning him face uh, a little bit down the road, which, you know, it would be nice, but I don't know. I don't know how I feel about because this. Because they still had, I mean, if they're not, I mean, they still had Curtis Axel as one of the guys when Lesnar was there, too. So. Yeah, but one's, they just... One's kind of cold, one's not so cold. Okay. Which one you want? Just take one. Um, so, um, but I don't know. It's like, you know, what's what's the reasoning behind Cesaro leaving Paul Heyman? Saying, you know, I'm not a Paul Heyman guy anymore. That's a trick. Why would it be a trick? I don't know. Why would he go to Triple H for a trick? I think you'll find a trick on the street. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it. But, Doug, what are your thoughts on Cesaro being, no longer being a Paul Heyman guy? I, mean, I think it's fine. I don't think Cesaro ever needed Heyman. I thought it was a fun little thing, but uh, I mean that dude's so fucking good. He doesn't need Heyman. Yeah, <laughs> anybody. I mean, it was. Uh, I mean, it, it definitely is not going to hurt him. I mean, Heyman's awesome. I'm not. I'm not downplaying Heyman at all. I'm just saying, like Cesaro's so fucking good. I mean, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, he basically saying, you know, I've got unfinished business with Dean Ambrose, so I want to match with him later tonight, and. Sure enough, that's what he gets. He had, uh, he had unfinished business with him. He was going to prove. Uh, yeah, he was going to prove. Yeah, take care of him and then we'll yeah. you'll impress me if you do. I wasn't paying attention too much. I was just like, oh, I got to type this up real quick. Cesaro is no longer a Paul Heyman guy. So I miss so much sometimes. So um, next up, we got to see uh, AJ and Paige going up against Emma and Natalia. Uh, short matchup. AJ and Paige end up getting the victory and they have their little celebration. And as soon as AJ starts to leave, Paige grabs her by the hair, yanks her down, saying, this is still my home. Bitch. This is still my house. So, um, going on the attack, tossing AJ around. Bitch. Throwing shitty headbutts. Shitty headbutts. <laughs> so, um, Shit headbutt for you. Shitty yeah, headbutt. For probably you. the, you know, I don't know. Everyone was expecting it, so it didn't really take anyone off guard. Um. Uh, I think it was just one of those. Well, it's just a matter of time. They're going to do it. But uh, thoughts on Paige being a heel now? Um, people seem to rave about her heel work. But, uh, From NXT. I don't know. I mean, she's... I, I still have yet to be impressed, like, in the ring from her. Okay. I don't know that a heel turn is going to... Uh, She'll be more vicious. Uh, she still seems kind of soft. <laughs> All right. How about you, Tyler? Um, I mean, I'm not like like really behind her. I think she's all right, or whatever. But uh, mm -hmm. I think that's like the only thing going right now. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Emma turns. A lot of people were expecting it, and it Paige. happened. Paige, God, what is wrong with me? Um, I do like Emma Le though. LeBron I, Jordan. Yeah. I do like Emma though. Yeah. I, I know she's probably, her. like, directionless since Santina's gone, but mm -hmm. 
I do like her. Yep. So we'll have, hopefully we'll get to see more of her. But next up, we got to see uh, Fandango come out and uh, facing Zack Ryder. But wait, he's not alone. He's brought the ladies with him. They love the Long Island oh, IZ. Shit. Summer Ray and Layla. Chilling with him. And Zack Ryder gets the win. Short matchup, nothing to really could take not away from look it. more surprised. Than yeah, I've gotten to win. he was like, I actually got a match and I actually won on Raw. Oh, the Rider Revolution 2.0 has begun. So that made me a, sort of made me happy. The fact that he was not that he won, the fact that he was happy about it, so happy that he won a match. Yeah, he's like, I finally won. Right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, it's big news for him. He hasn't really done a whole lot lately and. Yeah. Or anything. Not only was he a number one contender for the Intercontinental Championship in the Battle Royal, <laughs> along with 20 other guys, but don't tell him that. But he also had a match on Raw, and he won it, and he got the ladies at the end. I mean, yeah, they're just going to move on to someone else next week, but yeah, for that one night, yeah. it was good times. You should probably not say Hoski. Yeah. <laughs> he wants so, to keep those ladies woo, around. Woo, woo. Not around them, them anyways. Uh, next up, we got to see a Flo Rida concert, apparently. Um, I actually missed all this, and Florida. I'm glad I did. Flow Rider, Florida. Can I just say? Yes. I am by no means, by any stretch of the imagination, a Flow Rider fan. But so many people were like, "Oh my god, this is <laughs> we gotta sit through this shit." But you guys do realize that every month they promote some fucking awful butt rock band that is has the song <laughs> of their fucking pay per view every fucking month, and they play it every fucking week. And Flow Rider is far less offensive than all those butt rock bands that I hear every time. <laughs> and I am by no means saying Flo Rida is a, a good rapper. I'm just saying it's far less offensive than half of many, many, many of the other shit, shitty butt rock bands we see all the fucking time. So I want you all, all you guys to get equally offended at all the shitty butt rock bands every well, time they're on there. The thing, the thing I think the reason why they would get so upset about it is because you're stopping, like, okay, when they're promoting a song that's the theme for the pay-per-view, how long does that normally take? 30 seconds max? Yeah, but they usually do this a few times. Okay. You know. And he did medallies. He didn't do, like, full songs. He did, like, a medley. Right. The same thing he did for WrestleMania 20, 28 or whatever it was. So, so take 30, 30 seconds, do it once an hour. So that's an, a minute and a half. Whereas you're actually stopping Raw for, say, three minutes. Nah, it was longer than that. Oh, you said you didn't see it. Well, in the time that I was doing what I was doing, I came out and came back to the TV, you know. So, um, it was probably five minutes, give or take. Okay. You know, so that you're obviously, you know, I don't know. I'm just saying, like, people seem, like, particularly hung up on it. And I just, like, in my opinion, he's, like, far... Far less offensive than so well, much of the other shit. I mean, I think you could put anyone in that position for the for a miniature concert or medley or whatever you want to call it. You could put anyone in that prediction, per, you know, predicament, and the fans are going to turn on it just because it's like I came here to watch wrestling. Not well, you were stoked about CeeLo for SummerSlam that year because you like CeeLo. Yeah, oh, I like the song, but to have a concert, I'm like, I ah, you know, I don't want. I, I thought just, you were high on CeeLo being there that year. Maybe I'm You were high on Kid Rock. No, no. Nobody's no. fucking high on Kid Rock. Shut up. <laughs> but I mean, like, that's the thing. It's like you would put someone there and because be like. Because Kid Rock's awful. Okay, yes. But, you know, but you're stopping the show. People want to see wrestling. Not, you know, not a little flow ride a concert. I understand that. But I just feel like that doesn't seem. If people were saying that, I just wouldn't even bother making a comment. But it felt more like it was about it being Flo Rida to me, which is why I made a comment. Nah. To me, to me, it had nothing to do with the artist. It was the fact that they're stopping Raw to, you know, have a have a mini concert. And for what reason? You know, he's not there to promote anything. He he wore a WWE shirt that apparently was custom made or something. But that's it. All it was right. just, hey, he's let's just us. let's just have him here for, okay, we'll just have him here. Yeah, I mean. Again, well, like I'm not. Back and sell the beef with uh, Heath Slater. Yeah. Not Clem Wheatley. 
So, um, but yeah, but you know, it, it, it all led for a reason to have Stephanie McMahon out there. She introduced him and then she was like, Hey, give it a round of applause. And you know, they pan to the, to the, uh, commentator booth and, uh, JBL's like, Oh man, look over there. And we got some cops looking over at Stephanie McMahon and, uh, they end up arresting her for assaulting a fan apparently from when she slapped Brie Bella earlier in the night and uh, made a big ordeal about it saying, you know, this is neither the time or the place. Let's go somewhere else. We'll go backstage and talk about it. But they arrested her on the spot, brought her backstage. Triple H was furious. They put her in the car and drove off as he's saying, hey, we'll, we'll get it taken care of. Don't worry. So thoughts on thoughts on this segment. <laughs> Gassy. Uh, Taco Bell. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, you can say whatever you want to say, but the crowd was fucking hot for it. Yeah. <laughs> fucking red hot. Yeah. Um, uh, I didn't care for it so much, but I, I, I was digging it just because you know. Yeah, I didn't really have a problem with it, but I mean, like, it is almost irrelevant what you think because it feels like Stephanie is like the number one heel in the fucking company. Yeah. And it's and it's one of those things where we don't really see something like this too often, and you know it it felt like it just stopped the momentum of the show for Triple H. You know, like throughout the rest of the night, you see him on his phone talking to you know whoever he's talking to, talking to Joey Mercury backstage. You know, like oh, had this not happened, you know, the show would have gone off without a hitch. Funny. Yeah, and so it, you know, it's it's well, something. It takes some time to get her process. Yeah, <laughs> but it, you know it's it's something that we don't see too often, and I you know I was I was kind of digging it just because it's like you're getting you know you start the show one one with one vibe, and now all of a sudden this is happening, and you're getting a completely change in vibe uh, from the from the people in charge backstage. So um, you know I mean, people can say what they want about um, like Stephanie being on the show so much, but I mean I feel like the Proof is in the pudding with like they did that, like the crowd, like, the reaction she got. So I mean, yeah. I mean that's effective. I mean, clearly, I mean. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so Stephanie in, ends up getting booked and processed and taken to jail, and they were saying that she got released at like 1 a.m. or something like that. So. Bullshit. <laughs> yeah. They probably stopped that car as soon as they uh, got, cut the camera. No, I'm saying bullshit. You don't get processed and get through a holding cell that much time. <laughs> Oh, no, she was released. She probably had to spend some ch- some time in jail. Quotes, you know. Yeah, I'm saying bullshit. Oh, okay. It's way longer. <laughs> well, she knows some people. Yeah, I mean, she, she's the you know. I guess she's got billionaire pool. princess. She's got pool that I ain't never seen. <laughs> she posts bail in like 20 seconds, or however long it took to pull out a checkbook or something. So, um. Yeah, so the next matchup we got to see Ry Baxel going up against Big E and Kofi. Uh, short matchup, Ry Baxel ended up getting the victory. And you could tell that Big E and Kofi were frustrated with what happened over the course of the match. And all of a sudden, Xavier Woods appears in the ring saying, this is what I've been talking about. You know, we got we to gotta take a stand. Hey, this is what you've been talking about. He hasn't been saying that anything. You have to, I mean, you know. Hey, just, man. Have you been like walking around watching him? He could be talking to these guys all the fucking time. He could. You don't know. Yeah, know. He could have been true. saying this stuff backstage for months. Yeah. Or on Twitter. I don't know. Or something <laughs> else. I don't know. We don't know when he's been saying this, but he apparently be he's been saying it. Saying it. Like, he's oh, been shit. he's been saying this all along. He could be apparently. talking to himself under his breath all the live long day. You don't know. Yeah. So uh, uh, just like I've been telling myself. No. See, I've been saying this all along. We've needed <laughs> like, to I get that. Like, yeah, it could have been. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, so, Xavier Woods looking to sort of form a group with uh, so with Biggie and Kofi. Kofi's going to turn hill? It could. I mean, it looks like it. Just the just the attitude change that Kofi had when he brought it up. He was like, yeah, let's, you know, let's do it, you know. Um, they that could to, be very successful. I always thought maybe, like, Kofi can, well, we have to see how it turns out. But, like, I think he can go further as a hill. Yeah. Or he can at least well, advance himself see a little bit. How that turns out, you know, some people may not do good as hills either. But well, if are he, there uh, Mark Henry supposed to be back? And he's supposed to put they're supposed to put Mark Henry with him too. That'd be a good. I mean, that's just what I read. I mean, I don't know how true that Damn. is. It's just a rumor. Damn. So, uh, so yeah, so uh, possible new faction group kind of thing coming around. So be on the lookout for that. Yeah, I mean, I'm intrigued. I mean, they haven't done anything to yeah. say it's good or bad, but I'm definitely intrigued. Me yeah. too. 
It got he's it a well got the attention. Dude, I mean, yeah, Xavier. Yeah. Mm hmm. Going for that PhD. So, uh, <laughs> so really good stuff. Uh, next up, we got to see Rusev going up against uh, not so great Kali. Um, Rusev making short work I of the Punjabi playboy. Match. I have a problem with this match. Okay, speak. Kali Preach. was Preach. dominating. And then what does Rusev do? He kicks him in the shoulder. Then Kali falls down. That's the power he kicks him of in the arm. That the is arm, the power whatever. of Rusev. Like a, that's bullshit. That was Kali should be bullshit. Kali should be lucky that Rusev, his ankle was hurt because it, had he gotten full force kick, that might have been it for the great Kali in his career. So you thank Rusev for not ending Kali's career. Because all those hits that Rusev was doing <laughs> to Kali, it wasn't affecting him. Then the, the one kick to his what? It was his arm. His arm, and he falls down, and that was it. You know how Kali has been all of a sudden, like, on TV a lot in the past few weeks? And, <laughs> yeah. like, after following his dominant performance in the Battle Royal the night before, I was like, oh, they're pulling the plug on this gimmick. Kali's going over is what I thought. <laughs> I was like, oh, fuck. They're flushing Rusev down the fucking toilet. <laughs> that would have been awesome. But no, it was not to be. Rusev oh, destroys no. Great Kali. Rusev and she joins Kali. <laughs> Rusev absolutely destroys Great Kali, making him. Destroy he him. destroyed Bullshit. him. He made destroy, him tap. Destroying out. is an overstatement. Yeah. Tapped out. That's all that matters. Rusev. He lasted a long time. Is your victor. Ass kicks his arm and Kali falls down. That's not fucking true. <laughs> then you need to start He's, backing someone else. He only tapped out because he couldn't maneuver like to the ropes. He wasn't yeah. going to give up. He was just like, well, we're going to still made it. We're going to sit here all night. <laughs> so I might as well. <laughs> I might as well tap so I can roll over him. Yeah. Because, you know, his legs, his knees don't bend. So he yeah. couldn't have got up from that position. Yeah, he wasn't in any pain. He just couldn't get up without any help. And so he had just, to tap. No. Nope. tap on then him. We would be watching that match right now. <laughs> if he didn't tap. They would be in the same Longest position. episode of Raw ever. <laughs> he couldn't have, like, squirmed his way out of it or used his arms for... To, to, you know, his knees, he would just be like rolling around like a egg on the ground. He can't bend his leg. His That's knees don't bend to That's get true. up. How's he, he's, he would have to roll. His full, legs bend. He would have to roll out of the ring and fall no. on the ground. No. no. Yeah, his legs bend now. They no, bend. They bend. If you call this a bend, I mean. That's bend. Bend, not break. <laughs> not enough for him to get up. So, not so great, Kali. Taps out. The Rusev. Do, do they ever show Kali get up after matches? No, they don't. <laughs> oh. He has to roll him. He has to roll out of the they ring. Just wheel him out. <laughs> I'll pay attention more of that at the end of the they match. Have to oh, what, how did Kali get up? Okay. They had to put. They have to push him to the edge of the ring to her feet first, his, where he can fall out. <laughs> his knees bend. His, his, his legs. His legs will bend. So uh, next up, we got to see the main event his of knees the evening. Don't bend. Cesaro. <laughs> That's, true. That's true. His knees do not bend. <laughs> his legs bend. Uh, so get Kali to do some yoga. <laughs> I don't. He, uh, Did he pee yoga? I want to hear Kali say, "Not your mama's yoga" in the Kali voice. <laughs> Come on. So, um, final matchup: Cesaro versus Dean Ambrose. Um, good stuff from these guys. Uh, Cesaro ends up taking the uh, disqualification because uh, Cesaro was working the shoulder. So Dean Ambrose decided, hey, I'm going to do that too. Starts working on Cesaro's shoulder, grabs the chair, wails away on the uh, on the arm, causing disqualification. Uh, Dean Ambrose doesn't seem to care one way or the other. So the thoughts ah. on the matchup? It was good. Yeah? It was a fun match. Yeah. I enjoyed watching it. That's uh, the first time in a fight in WWE. I really That's thought fun. they were going to do the... Uh, like Cesaro is gonna have to eat shit from Lesnar thing for denouncing Heyman. Hmm. I'm glad they didn't, but yeah. uh, I really thought that's where they were going with it. That I totally bad. forgot about the the battle royale, uh, the pay per view when Cesaro. We thought Cesaro was do gonna do the swing to Kofi over the ropes. <laughs> you remember that? Royale with cheese. What? <laughs> what? What? The metric system. No. Uh, oh, like giant swing him out of the ring. Yeah, that would've been awesome. I don't know, it's random, but I just thought <laughs> we talked about it, so I thought I would mention it. Yep. So uh amazing. So <laughs> that's the good Kofi spot I want to see getting tossed out of the ring in giant swing. <laughs> so Cesaro ends up getting the victory, but it's via disqualification. And that brings us to the final segment of Raw. Um Triple H going to announce who the uh the number one contender is. Uh Orton comes out and uh Reigns brawls with him. They fight to the back backstage and then uh 
Paul Heyman comes out. Plan C is actually Cesaro. No, not Cesaro. It's actually Brock Lesnar. So Brock Lesnar comes out. Uh, they shake hands and make it official. And then Paul Heyman delivers just some great mic work saying, you know, I'm not here to just spew stuff at you. I'm here to drop facts on you. Uh, you know, there are fans who love Cena and they chant, let's go Cena. There are fans that hate him and saying Cena sucks. We don't really care which side you're on because Cena's going to get his ass kicked. Um, just really good mic work from, from Paul Heyman, as you know, we know that he can do. Um, so really good stuff. What did you guys think? It was really good, but I, well, something that really rubbed me the wrong way was when Heyman said that uh, that heartless old CEO was in the uh, ambulance with Undertaker after the, like, I didn't like them mentioning Vince and Taker going to the hospital, yeah. like, after Mania. Uh, just because, like, that's the one guy I don't think you can, like, you got to leave the kayfabe alone with. Like, you can't do the, I mean, for all intents and purposes, he's probably gone, but still, yeah. like, out of respect for the way he kept his own kayfabe, I don't think you can, like, talk about him going to the hospital and shit with Vince. Well, that's not the first time he's he's mentioned that. Well, I'm saying I don't like it. I mean, yeah. I don't like when he does it. Okay. Other but, than that, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, it's fun. Okay. How about you, Tyler? Uh, Very powerful. Yeah. Good well, stuff. How he was talking and stuff like that. So cool stuff. So that's... Pretty much how we close out Raw. Brock Lesnar, the new number one contender, as expected, thanks to that leaked, uh, you know, poster that came out a few weeks. Time. Yeah, but uh, but yeah. So uh, with that said, it's time to go into the hot topics. Only one topic this week, and that's going to be where uh, where Tyler and I are going to be. Unfortunately, Doug won't be able to attend. Um, we're going to be going to uh, to Booker T's Reality of Wrestling, Summer of Champions, our first uh, eye pay per view. Going to be really cool stuff. There's going to be. Uh, I don't think it was the first. I think they did. Oh um, well. Or maybe yeah, it's there's that, the MVP. Yeah. I know the MVP show. That uh, that's right. So, uh, um, Diamond Dallas Page will be there. Teddy Long. Uh, Teddy Long, Carlito. Mm -hmm. uh, who else? Three Man Band, baby. Oh, uh, Jinder Mahal. Mm -hmm. uh, Josh Matthews? I don't or remember. Alex I don't remember that one either. I don't know. But uh, it's going to be a great show. It's not going to be in uh, the Clear Lake Sports and Recreation hey, Center. Are you Jonathan Gresham again, or was that a one time thing? Do you know that? Huh? Uh, I thought they were. I don't know. I'm not for sure. Have to check that out. Do not do. <laughs> mm-hmm. But uh, it's not going to be in uh, in the Clear Lake Sports and Recreation Center like Humble. they normally are. Yeah, it's going to be in Humble. So uh, for more information on that, go to realityofwrestling.com and uh, and check that stuff out. Uh, it's really cool stuff. Hopefully, we'll get to go and have a good time. So uh, who did you think Gresham wrestle last time? Did you go to that show? No, we didn't go. Mm. I saw the uh, stuff about him, but I don't know who he was. Oh, Devon's going to be there. Yeah, I forgot Devon, yeah. So, really cool stuff. Hopefully, we'll have a great time. So, uh, time to go into the Q&A portion of the show. Your questions, our answers. First question coming to us from Victor. 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 Saying, more good stuff from the guys. Love the show. Also, just curious, my friends and I were discussing stables at Battleground and realized there are far more heel stables than face stables throughout WWE's history. Why do you guys think that is? Do you think that stables have a certain purposes for wrestlers that need to be followed? Or can a stable have different ways of being made, used, and disbanded? Uh, well, generally, the, the point about mostly being heel stables, like, the reason for that is... Like, there are good ways of getting baby faces over. If you think about all the great stables, they were hill stables that... They're all hill stables, and the ones that turn into baby face or stables are, are the ones that get baby faced are the ones that just their popularity grows so much over time, even though mm -hmm. they started as heels. The purpose is, like, to get... A heel stable is a good way to get a baby face over. It's a good way to get more than one baby face over at the same time. Uh Think about a heel stable. Like, the reason babyface stables aren't so prominent or don't work as well are because babyface, you want to add the odds stacked against a babyface. You want um, you want sympathy for the babyface. And so that's easy to do when you've got multiple heels, like, picking on a babyface. Mm -hmm. And uh, they can even do it to different babyfaces at a time. Like, they can all gang up on one guy at one part of the show. They can gang up on another guy at the other part of the show. Strength in numbers. <clears throat> right. So, like, they're they're good at creating sympathy for the baby face. And that's what you want out of a baby face. Because if a baby, baby face can't win a match that he 
he has even even odds with, or if he can't win a match that he has the numbers advantage in, then he just fucking sucks. Like, there's no sympathy there. He just sucks. Like, you want the odds stacked against him. Mm-hmm. And any, like, uh, baby face uh, stables are born out of necessity. It's out of, out of them. I need help. I need backup. Like, dudes that are getting fucked over by the Hill stable saying, hey, man, like, we got to band together to fight these fuckers, right. right? And that's why they're less prevalent and they're less, like, successful because eventually you need them just to combat the hill stable but it makes for a better story when the baby faces are outnumbered for a while mm-hmm. so that's why you know if you think of all the greats they were all hill stables i mean you can't i mean i mean you can't think of very many like baby face stables and the ones you can are ones that most of those probably came out of hill stables that just got super popular yeah degeneration x and <laughs> nwo four horsemen four, evolution yeah. Blah 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 mm-hmm. blah. Shield. Shield. <laughs> yeah. The list goes on. So yeah, it's definitely one of those, you know, you bring in the heel stable to to play in their favor of the numbers game. Um It's also good for hot like hiding a guy's weaknesses. Like yeah. uh you know, like a guy like Roman, like, you know, that's how he, you know, they brought him in to hide mm-hmm. some of his weaknesses. Keep his mic work short and sweet, let his actions do the talking. Keep yeah. even his ring work short and sweet. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, you know, it's, it's a, it's a good way to elevate a lot of people pretty simply, you know, you, you will have your stars that'll stand out obviously. Um, but you know, the, the guys who aren't necessarily as popular, they're still elevated higher than they probably would get by themselves. Like hills get over by being shitheads and like, yeah. what's more shithead thing to do than to gang up on somebody. You know? Right. <coughs> so, but thank you for the question. Uh, next question coming to us from uh, Six Star Criminal Shane. Great show, guys. Some people Haas has played was Haas Hogan, Steve Hostin, Brett Haas, uh, but the Glamma Haas, Beth Phoenix. Um, anyways, wanted to ask you what your favorite moment is involving Santino. Keep going strong and hashtag Cousin Doug. <laughs> favorite Santino moment? Um, my favorite moment is when... Uh I don't know if he, he had the intercontinental title or whatever, mm-hmm. but like ev- pretty much like the whole roster was in the ring. He rapped or whatever. I don't remember that. That was pretty good. My favorite probably Santino moment was the honka meter. The honka donka man was the intercontinental champion for amazing 63 weeks or 53, however many was it was. How about you, Doug? Oh, did you trust me? Because I didn't hear my fucking name. I did. Yes. Hmm? Hmm? Yes, what? Yes, Doug. Oh, oh, okay. You're asking me now. Yes, favorite Santino moment. Uh, Santino. Yeah. Santino. Santino. WrestleMania 25. Yeah. I liked all the Santino. Yeah, I thought it was rad. Yay! So, uh, so, so, thank you, Six Star Criminal. Good stuff. Uh, (laughs) you're right there, Doug. Yeah. Why wouldn't I be? Okay. Hey, I was just making. Nobody was talking to me. Yeah. I didn't hear shit. The next question coming to us from Cody saying, hey guys, uh, coming at you with an interesting topic of discussion. The Miz and Dolph Ziggler have been uh, have had virtually identical careers. Both debuted in the 06-07 time frame, both from Cleveland slash Hollywood. Uh, both, f- uh, both former world champion IC United States MITB winners. Uh, will the WWE ever ha- have uh, these two compete in a serious story-driven rivalry? Just an interesting thought I had while I was watching Raw this week. Well, I think that's what they wanted to do. They just put the belt on Miz so he could do his uh, media tour or whatever. Yeah. So by all accounts, I think they're heading towards that. Yeah, and so more I than likely we'll more than likely we'll see it at SummerSlam. How about you, Tyler? Uh, yeah, like they're they're doing their stuff now. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, next question coming to us from Ben Fold saying, hey guys, good show. Just wanted to say with the debut of Kenta, do you think the rumors of wrestlers being put in the dark because there's, uh, their understanding of English will continue with him? I hope not because he's very talented and hopefully will go far. Plus, can you let me know if my uh, questions are stupid? Thanks. I'm not sure what he means by in the dark. Uh, do you think that Kenta will, you know, kind of be pushed to the to the side because he, he doesn't understand or he doesn't fluently speak English. Sort of like how Sin Cara did. Like, they brought him in, <clears throat> didn't really, you know, speak the language, didn't want to learn the language, and kind of 
fell to the wayside after injuries and all that as well. Well, I definitely have a a big problem seeing him as a main eventer. If you can't carry your half of a promo, then I don't see you as a main eventer, period. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, he speaks very little to no English. I mean, like, from 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 what I understand, he speaks very little English. I'm sure they could polish him up and have him memorize some phrases, but you can't really do a promo organically. Not that they do very many organic pr- promos, but yeah. it's hard to get through a long promo, uh, especially in the main event slot. If you can't, if it's not your native language, mm-hmm. uh, Sinkar is a little bit different. Sinkar is. Uh, it was fine for him to be silent because it worked into the mystery of being a masked guy. He doesn't. He didn't necessarily need to talk. I don't think that's necessarily why he didn't succeed. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I think that works in his favor. I don't necessarily need to see the luchador guy talk. He isn't a mask. He's mysterious. Whatever. Um, so I don't see him being. I mean, if you, I can see him being like a solid mid card, upper mid card. Eh, maybe I can see him being a solid mid card worker guy, but uh, he's not the kind of guy they're going to give him manager to because he's he's a small guy he's like a punk or a brian in stature and uh if you're a guy that size you're gonna have to be able to talk for yourself it's different yeah. to like it's different for a guy like Kali to get a a mouthpiece it's different for a guy like uh i don't know a big freak of freak of nature a big weird impressive looking guy it's different for them to give him someone to talk because he's offering you something that all your other guys can't but if you look like everybody else on the roster and you can't carry your half of a promo, then I, I have a hard time seeing you as a main eventer. And uh, I'm a guy who likes Kenta. Uh, I don't think it's like a, them signing a guy to hurt another company because Pro Wrestling Noah hasn't been number one ever in Japan. Uh, I mean, they may have, I mean, I guess maybe they were the number two company at one time, or maybe they were, but it's most certainly New Japan is like the number one company in, in Japan right now. So it's not like they're stealing a guy from a company who's trying to make moves in the American like market. Mm-hmm. And furthermore, I mean, like I have a sort of a hard time like seeing him as a main eventer anyway. Like I don't know, like he has a very strike heavy offense. I mean, full disclosure, I haven't like followed Kenta closely in like a few years now. But like at the time when I was watching a lot of Kenta matches, I don't know how his move sets have evolved, but his his moveset is very strike oriented and he's a, a very stiff striker. I mean, lots of kicks, lots of back fists, lots of elbows, lots of knees. I don't know how well that's going to mesh. Like he's going to have to find a happy medium with the WWE style, the way that a guy like Brian was able to keep some of the cool shit that he like integrate some of the cool shit he was in uh, able to do into the WWE style. And I don't know how you necessarily do that with such a heavy, like, strike-based offense. I mean, maybe they make an exception for him. Maybe they don't. And I'm a fan. I just don't – I don't see him as a main eventer, like, in the WWE. Uh, I think he's got, a like, an uphill battle. Like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. And I don't think it's, like, a political statement or anything. And it's really up to him if he wants to, you know, be able to learn learn the language. Because, uh, you know, uh, take Yoshi Tatsu, for example. When he first came into the WWE, he didn't speak any English. And by the time he – eventually was departed with it with the WWE he could at least you know have a conversation so uh you know if 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 he's got someone there who will help him and teach him and yeah, stuff like that Unaki. yeah um, yeah but that's even that's I mean even being like conversational that's the world difference between that and a promo you right know? I mean like I uh I took some Spanish like when I was in school and I could like <laughs> utter some Spanish phrases and some Spanish sentences but I could not cut a promo in Spanish, you know, right. like for my life, you know. I think I mean I don't know. I like the guy, but I think he's got an uphill battle. Right. So only time will tell, and uh, and hopefully he can surpass expectations. Uh, so thanks for the question. Final question coming to us from Seth Rickson, you boys, uh, saying, "Will the WWE ever stop the Kofi not touching the floor spots? Have we not reached the level where his spots are just too complicated and they make the workers look stupid? Am I missing something, or is it now that we're supposed to be uh, this is supposed to be a comedy spot?" I don't think it's a comedy spot. I just think that's just a thing. Yeah, it's, it's just the oh my gosh, look what Kofi Kingston did. Oh, that's what he's known for. He's the human highlight reel. Oh, what's he gonna do this time? Yeah, I mean, I agree. Uh, I don't think it's a comedy spot either. I just think it's this thing, and they'll keep doing it until he fucks one of them up. 
Yeah. And then and then the very next rumble, he'll be the first to be eliminated. Just no questions asked, just out. So uh so yeah, there you go. Yeah, I'm sure he practiced this like all day of the day he's supposed to do it, but still <laughs> if it's sooner or later he's gonna fuck one of those up and it's gonna be all over. Yeah. He's gonna fuck up and like get eliminated like there. Yeah. So, uh, so, yeah, there you go. So, thanks for the questions. Make sure to submit your questions on our Facebook page, WNS Podcast, our YouTube page, WNS Video. Check us out on WrestlingNewsSource.com, WrestlingNewsSource.com on Facebook, and subscribe to us on iTunes by searching Wrestling News Source Podcast. Follow us on Stitcher, Player.fm, and Beyond Pod. Just search Wrestling News Source Podcast to find us. Uh, Twitter at WNS Podcast, WNS underscore Daniel, Tyler underscore Bear. There you go. So, for the podcast crew, I am Daniel Heron. I'm Tyler. I'm Doug. <laughs> and we'll catch you all next week.